Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of trekking through compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 54, Bread and Circuses. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode Bread and Circuses, which aired on March 15, 1968, and occurred on start date 4729.4. Story synopsis. When on routine patrol, the Enterprise happens upon space debris from the SS Beagle, a survey ship which disappeared six years ago. The Beagle had been a Class 4 star drive vessel with a crew of 47. It had been commanded by Captain R.M. Merrick, an Academy associate of Kirk. When Spock projects the path of the wreckage back in time, he discovers a civilization of modern-day Romans on Planet 4 of the 892 system. The Enterprise then intercepts a television transmission showing the glad- a gladiator killing the last of the barbarians who turns out to be a Beagle flight officer, William B. Harrison. After beaming down, Spock, Bones, and Kirk are confronted by a cadre of rifle toy escaped slaves. The landing party is captured and taken to the slave's leader, Septimus, a former senator who now worships the sun. Although the slave Flavius wants to kill the Enterprise landing party, Septimus accepts them as friends and offers them hospitality. The extreme similarity of 892 system civilization to the Romans' Earth is apparently a coincidence demonstrating to Kirk the validity of Hodgkin's law of parallel planet development. When Kirk questions the slaves about a man named Merrick, he finds that the leader and first citizen of the Roman-like empire is called Merricus. When Kirk and his comrades then express an interest in capturing Merricus, Flavius Maximus, a former gladiator, offers to accompany them. However, they are captured by Roman forces and put in prison, and Kirk questions Flavius to find out about the institution of slavery on the planet and finds that slave uprisings virtually ceased after they were given such rights as medical care and pensions. Kirk McCoy and Spock attempt to escape their, when their guards escort them to talk to Merrick, but Merrick has anticipated this, disarms them, and brings them to his quarters for a conversation. Merrickus is indeed Merrick, and he tells Kirk that he beamed down to the planet to obtain iridium ore for repairs to the Beagle after it sustained meteor damage. Here he met First Consul Claudius Marcus. He also decided he could not bring word of the planet's culture to the Federation without hopelessly contaminating it. Merrick therefore agreed to stay but killed those of his crew who could not adapt by sending him in, into the arena to be killed in a fight. The consul orders Kirk to transport his crew down a few at a time. And skir- instead, Kirk gives code word, condition green, alerting Scotty that he is in trouble, but that Scott should not interfere. For refusing to comply, Merrick sends McCoy and Spock to fight in the arena against Attic gladiators Achilles and then the recaptured Flavius. Spock is unsporting, however, since he stuns his opponent and then nerve pinches Flavius when McCoy gets into trouble. McCoy and Spock are returned to prison, but Kirk is entertained by the proconsul slave Drusilla prior to execution. Scott uh, prepares to disrupt power to the entire planet from the Enterprise just as Kirk is about to be executed on live Roman TV. Before the execution can take place, Flavius intervenes. Unfortunately, he is killed by a machine gun fire before Scott cuts power. Kirk then frees McCoy and Spock, only to be surrounded by Roman guards. However, Merrick has stolen a communicator and signals the Enterprise to beam them up. Unfortunately, in the middle of his transmission, he is slain by the pro council. Merrick throws the communicator to Kirk, who has Spotty beam them up before their cell is crisscrossed with machine gun fire. Back aboard the Enterprise, Uhura discovers that the escaped slaves were not sun worshippers, but worshippers of a different sun, i.e. the Son of God. Fun fact. This episode parodies the television industry in the 1960s in several different ways. First, fake applause and catcalls were used to simulate a studio audience, and the race for high television ratings is lampooned several times. The station manager slash master of games threatens a now pacifist slave that if he does not fight more convincingly, you will bring the network's ratings down, Flavius, and we will do a special on you. Later, the proconsul sneers at Kirk about the captain's impending death to be televised from the arena by telling Kirk, you're centuries beyond anything as crude as television. Kirk replies, I heard it was dot, 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 similar. 
an oblique reference to the series' own rating difficulties. So what are the compliance takeaways in this case? Well, most interesting are the skills you need to be to be a captain of the Enterprise and or a starship and the skills you need as a chief compliance officer. It turns out that Merrick uh, was in line to become a captain but failed a critical test on interpretation. This uh, really points to something uh, that I think is as important as technical proficiency is, is the soft skills you develop as a compliance officer. Those so, uh, soft skills will help you to navigate uh, the crossroads of a corporate world, but also should you uh, find yourself in an FCB, FCPA imbroglio, uh, then you can uh, use your technical competence to help remediate the issue. Second, translation. Uh, here, there was a big foobar throughout the show about the difference in S-U-N sun and S-O-N sun. Well, this is a Christianity uh, episode of Star Trek, so if you're not Christian, sorry. But uh, in the 1960s, this is what this was seen as, and the misnomer of sun for sun uh, was a play, obviously, on the words, but also uh, very significant uh, for the religious uh, times involved. And then finally, what's your clash of cultures? Or finally, is there a clash of cultures uh, in your organization between the uh, business units? So if you're an international organization subject to the FCPA, you probably have multiple cultures across your organization. You have a consensual and egalitarian type, typical in Scandinavian companies. The type of culture you're dealing with in your organization it's critical for you to understand that culture so that you can help manage that culture more effectively from the compliance perspective. So learn the types of cultures within your organization. Join us tomorrow where we take up the final episode of Season 2 with the introduction of Gary Seven in the great show, Assignment Earth. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. 